You're listening to the Port City Podcast, where Portsmouth businessmen and women take the mic. Now on to the show with your hosts, Ben Van Camp and Jen Stevens. All right, welcome everybody to the fourth episode of the Port City Podcast. I'm Ben Van Camp, uh, Vice President of What's Next at the Chamber Collaborative. We're excited to uh, welcome you here today. We're with Jen. Hi, I do communications and uh, events for the Chamber. And our guest today is Jeanette Desmond, uh, owner of Kilwins, uh, downtown Portsmouth, kind of a mainstay. How long have you been there? I opened up in August of 2012. 2012, all right, so a good bit now. Yeah. That's coming yeah. up on seven years, that's awesome. Uh, Jeanette's a board member of the Chamber Collaboratives and uh, very supportive of our organization. And uh, we're thrilled to uh, chat with her today about uh, open, owning a business in downtown Portsmouth, the struggles of that, and you recently went through a program called 10,000 Small Businesses. And I, I want did. to talk a lot about that. Great. Um, so I'd love to know, because uh, at one point in my life, I explored um, opening a franchise of my own. And we spent quite a bit of time uh, investigating all the different franchises. So I'd love to know why Kilwins uh, jumped out at you and why you started Kilwins. Um, it's a little bit of an interesting story. We were living um, in Bedford at the time, my husband and I. We had one son in high school and one in college, and we were thinking of downsizing. And we wanted to move to Portsmouth. We wanted to yep. be here badly. Um, I'm a New Hampshire native, but I've always wanted to live on the coast. And um, we had, uh, my husband can, can work anywhere near an airport, um, so it didn't really matter for him, but I really wanted to open a retail store. I didn't know what it was going to be. Um, and doing some research, I was talking to my brother one day and he said, you know, why don't you check out Kilwins? And I had never heard of it, there was nothing nearby. So I started doing some research on Kilwins and, and thought, this is perfect. This is exactly what Portsmouth needs. It's perfect for me. I wanted a place where I could be happy every day and all my customers yeah. would be happy. And that's how it happened. Great. Yeah. I, I mean, it was a lot of research, it, a lot of vetting. Um, um, I cried a few times when I was going through the business plan, to be sure. Um, a franchise made sense to me because I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Um, it, was, it has been around since 1947, so they were doing something right. Um, and there was, nothing, uh, there was nothing close by that, that um, was similar. So I knew that it would be a, a, a great addition to the city. And awesome. how, how has it turned out? Have you been happy every day? Actually, every, <laughs> it's funny because people ask that because I do, I work a lot. Yeah, um, but do. My kids are grown. I'm not, you know, I'm not really needed at home that much. And um, every day when I put my key in the door, I'm like, this is mine. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That was great. Um, so seven years downtown, right? Mm -hmm. it, what things have changed. It's yeah. continuing to change. Uh, what, are you, what are you noticing? How are those changes impacting Kilwins and you? Well, um, actually, it's kind of, for me, I'm, I'm getting to be known as, well, people know what I am now. People understand it. When I first opened, uh, they would mispronounce it and say, oh, is, is your name Kerwin? Or, but now, you know, that's completely understood. Um, I think the city has done a great job um, supporting businesses, um, bringing in people for events. I mean, it, people come in for the music hall or Prescott Park or, you know, the, the way the tourism committee mm -hmm. works on bringing people in from different areas. I love when people come into my store and they can barely speak English. And <laughs> chocolate is a universal language, so we always yeah. get through. But, um, but it's wonderful mm -hmm. to see um, from so many different parts of the world people come in. Um, the things that I've noticed, um, gosh, I, I, don't, I don't think I've noticed huge changes other than um, there, you know, there's definitely a struggle in finding employees because there's, there's very low unemployment. And that has been in New Hampshire for a long time, and now I see it spreading um, when I talk to other franchisees in other parts of the U.S., and they're starting to struggle with it as well. So that's, um, that's a little difficult, but we've also partnered with some places. Um, you know, if you have um, support staff working in hotels and their main hours there are in the morning, my main hours are at night. Sometimes we share employees, so oh, that works great. really well. Yeah, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let's see. <laughs> so all right, I got another question. Oh, so, wait, we yeah. are supposed to alternate, right? Yep. Well, yeah, but we'll it. it's all good. Um, so uh, the question I want to ask was, Portsmouth's you know, uh, known for like unique destinations, mm -hmm. unique retail. 
and and you are one of the, uh, one of very few franchises downtown right. chain type store type downtown. Yep. Do you ever get any pushback on that, or or is it just because it's chocolate people love it anyways? I think it's education. When I first opened, there was a lot of pushback. No chains in Portsmouth, and. My store's not a chain. A chain is when a big corporation owns a bunch of businesses and they run them. This is my store, 100%. I'm a New Hampshire native. I've lived in New Hampshire my entire life. Um, and they see me there every day. This is, it's my yeah. skin in the game, nobody right. else's. So um, this is my business. And even though I have the support of a franchise in that um, I can get, um, well, I get recipes from them. I still support a lot of local business. I buy a lot of my ingredients locally. Oh, you can? That's great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that educating people and understanding the difference between a franchise and a chain and also understanding that I'm hands-on. I'm It's an owner-operated um, franchise. So the owner, me, I'm in the store every day. I walk to the bank. I make my deposit. I, you know, it's me. So I think that makes a huge difference to people. And it's kind of all in the family, if I'm right, <laughs> right? Does there are times when you may find um, three and sometimes four generations in my store oh. at one time. So when I first opened, my sister um, came on board with me for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, she lives an hour away, so it was a little difficult for her. But she, I needed somebody that I could trust to be sure. there. We're open <laughs> 363 days a year. And we're open from about 10 in the morning till 10 or 11 at night. So I can't do that all myself. I did not know you were open that late. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. So and um, so she worked with me for a year. And she also would pick up my mother, who is 91 years old now. <laughs> She'd pick her up on the way and bring her in. And my mother loves it. So sometimes you'll see my mother, myself, my son, who's now uh, my manager. And I also have great nephews that show up in the store. They're little, but I'm grooming them to be employees someday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would love to see a, a picture of all of you guys together. That's a great idea. Actually, they're going to gonna be here. Um, they're going to be here this weekend for Market Square Day. They, they're helping out. So I, oh, cool. I'm going to see if I can take that a picture. That would be a lot of great. fun. <laughs> Too much fun. Awesome. Well, so recently you uh, did the 10,000 Small Businesses yes. Program, which is uh, a free sort of miniature MBA program funded yep. by Goldman Sachs Foundation uh, that came to New Hampshire and you were in the first class. I think yep. the second class is ongoing right now. Correct. Yeah. I'd love to uh, hear, you know, let's start with why you were interested in that program and the selection process and, and uh, then we'll get into sort of the nuts and bolts of it. Okay. So um, I heard about it through the uh, collaborative. I went to a, um, I don't know, I guess a information or a get to know this session with my son. And um, there was a woman there from Babson. Actually, it's, it's, it's funded by Goldman Sachs, but the curriculum was written by Babson and it's administered through the um, community college yep. program. So, um, so anyways, I went and listened and it just sounded like it was a really good fit. I was ready for something like this. Um, although my business has been doing great, I, I was kind of looking into possibly um, adding a different revenue stream and seeing what I could uh, mm -hmm. what I could pull together. So um, after listening to also a graduate of the program and her experience, I thought this you know this is something I'm going to try to do. I, I didn't think I had a chance to get into it because because it is free. Um, there's a vetting process and they they really want the best candidates in there. So mm -hmm. you um, you have to submit an application that includes a lot of background. Um, on you personally, your business, what you think your growth plan may be, um, if you have more than one, you know, what are the multiple growth plans that you have. So I submitted and um, then there was two or three more hurdles before you finally went to a face-to-face -face interview and um, you sit down with people from, um, from the 10 KSB program and um, just like this, you, you're interviewed. Um, and I was selected, which is great. There were 37 business people in the state who were in my cohort. And there was a couple other locals in there yeah, as well. Yeah, right? they had, um, uh, do you want me to name them? I'm not <laughs> sure. So north from um, JES, oh, JSA right. Architects, Architects. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Suzanne from Port City Pretzels, yep. mm -hmm. um, Dagan from Myers Bench uh, Beer Company. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm, when you're in the program, there's 37, and everyone's split into different um, uh, small growth groups, and 
they kind of split you up right. for a reason. They want right. you to get to know other people. But there was also um, Katie from uh, Dance Innovations, which is right mm -hmm. over in Greenland. So there were a number of people from this area. And um, you go through uh, three months of... For me, it, it was pretty much seven days a week. Um, it's a hybrid of online classes and in person. At, and this was held at um, Manchester Community College in Manchester. And you're there the whole time. I mean, you stay overnight. You do dinner yeah. with everybody. You stay overnight? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A in a hotel, not in no, <laughs> college, but yeah. <laughs> wow, that's intense. Yes, okay. yes. It was, it was intense. But um, when it was over, we, it, I was melancholy for a while. I was, yeah, it's, you form very, very tight bonds. Um, part of the program, in the beginning, you uh, talk about the boundaries, and so you learn a lot about the inner workings of other people's businesses, and you, you agree that you're gonna keep things um, yeah. quiet, oh, but yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but there was, in fact, there was one lady, and, and this is out there, so it's not a big deal, but she had a, um, she has a cleaning service, and her desire was to make her business grow enough to sell, and after completing the course, she says, I'm not selling it, I'm growing <laughs> oh, it and great. keeping it, so it's, it's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. And the, the end result of that, if, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. is uh, like a five-year growth plan, is that? Yeah, well, the year, the, I, I'm not sure that there's a time limit, okay. limit on it, but... Um, what, what I did was I actually had two avenues where I was thinking of either possibly opening up a second location or um, possibly um, going beyond my door. So in other words, not waiting for people to come into my store, but oh. actually bringing my store to people. That's interesting. So, um, and that's the route that I'm going. I'm, oh, not, cool. going to, I'm not going to do the um, second location at this time. I'm not saying that I won't in the future, but I will go through the process that I went through in this class to determine whether or not I want to open a second location. But um, everybody's growth plans, uh, you're, you're working for weeks and weeks and you're working in the big group, the small group, you're working on opportunity statements and financial um, feasibility and even an exit strategy. This growth plan, at some point, there's gotta be a way to get out. Yep. You know, For me, it may not be for 10 or 15 or 20 years, but um, there's gotta be that idea in the future. and. Um, when you, at the end, the culmination of the program, you actually pitch your plan to your cohorts. And it's oh. literally a three-slide presentation, and it's over. And That's how they have, should be. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, honestly, the feedback is tremendous. Yeah. Um, the growth of the people that you meet on the first day and then seeing them at the end of the program, it, I would do it all again if I could. Absolutely. So will you go to Liar's Bench more often now? I will go, uh, yes, and Port City Press, yeah, <laughs> yeah everywhere. That's <laughs> Absolutely. But, but a, lot of, um, a lot of what we're doing now, too, is I'm finding that I'm actually working with some of these people um, that I was in class with. Like, my uniforms are going to be coming from somebody that I didn't know before. Yeah. And so I cool. think it's a great thing. Yeah. So your That's community great. gets smaller and bigger at the same time. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And part of the, um, was part of the 10,000 program, yeah. was it how you give back? Because I know a lot of what you do is giving back, absolutely. including at our golf tournament tomorrow. Yes, which, absolutely. There was, uh, there was one of, the, one of the days, it was an in-session day, so we were all in Manchester, and, and uh, we had some people coming in talking about that and being part of your community and how important that is. And um, I, part of the reason for me opening a business in the first place mm -hmm. was that I wanted to become a um, part of a community and to and to give back. Um, that, that I was just kind of at that point in life where I really wanted to do that. So yes, yeah, so I support, um, I'm a huge supporter of also um, Friends in Action, which is a, oh, what's that? a program for adults with disabilities oh. that just is um, for social programs, cool. um, allowing people who are beyond school age to get together and have meaningful relationships. Because um, once school ends, there's really not a lot for people with disabilities. Totally. So. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Wow. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd love to hear more, and maybe you don't want to share more, about your future bringing Kilwins out. Yes. Tell me, tell yep. us a little more about that, because that sounds good. Yeah, it's, um, I think that um, it, the, the collaborative does a great job of pe bringing people in. I can't think of a different way to get more people to walk by my store. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing a great job. Me, personally, <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I can advertise and stuff. But, um, but what I am trying to do now is work more on B2B. Mm -hmm. So corporate gifting, mm -hmm. um, you know, everything from 
for instance, I have a new relationship with somebody where um, she has a bunch of clients and she gives me a list of her clients' names and their birthdays and on their birthday I send, or in time for their birthday, I send out something. That's she doesn't excellent. have to think about yeah, it. Awesome. I do it all yeah. soup to nuts once a month. I give her a bill and it's all done. That's a great um, service. Yeah. And we're also um, gift baskets, which, yep. um, or gift boxes that can be shipped mm -hmm. uh, much more easily. Um, all of those things are things that uh, we're working on, um, getting together a packet of um, um, op, you know, different things that we can bring to corporations or, or even small businesses. Whether, I don't, it doesn't matter if you know, you're a hairdresser or a lawyer or you're Lonza or something like that. I mean, <laughs> there's always an opportunity for someone to supply a gift mm -hmm. or, or recognition, employee recognition. Um, um, ice cream socials held at your business, yeah. things like that. I like the sound of that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You want to test it out. <laughs> Everybody Not likes over. the sound of that. <laughs> and do you have a particular like Portsmouth candy bar? Hershey too. Oh, you do? What I is, do. It's, is it the word it's, or what is yes, it? Yes. <laughs> so it's, um, I, I don't even know what it's called, that script that you see everywhere um, where you see it's written in. in oh, in the, the, yeah. the old cursive yes. logo? Yeah. Yes, I have that and I make a, a chocolate bar out of that, yeah. So cool. And our, you know, our chocolate is our own chocolate. So Kilwins is bean to bar, so we source Oh, it, it is? Yes, oh, okay. it is. So, um, and that's a little bit unusual. Mm. So um, even, even the white chocolate, because I know that um, you had expressed a little interest in that before. I our did? white chocolate, I yes, you it. did. <laughs> so it is made with cocoa butter. It's not a compound, and um, so yes, it is. It, it's delicious. I mean, a, a lot of white chocolate is um, not necessarily. It's more of a compound thing. If it might yeah, have a waxy taste to it. Yeah, they say it's not it. really chocolate. And right. They try to hurt my feelings. Yes. <laughs> well, like our it. white chocolate is. It's made with absolute cocoa butter. It just doesn't have the cocoa solids in it. So that's I why. I will be in. Yeah. I will. <laughs> I would be an easy 400 pounds. In your store. Everyone says that, but that's actually not true. I, I've, I've done research on this. Yeah. Uh, my employees lose weight when they first start working there. Okay, and it's I not will be working they don't, for you soon. Too, there then. you go. <laughs> it's not because they don't eat it. It's because you hustle. It's yeah. you know you're you're yeah. on your feet. You're yeah, running yeah, around. Yeah. You're helping customers. Yeah, well, that's great. <laughs> they definitely awesome. do hustle. So what uh, what do you see as the future? Like uh, I, there's. There's change, you know, we have uh, Tuscan Market opening yep. up with, you know, Gelato and yep. and there's other stores coming in, you know, does that concern you? Uh, obviously it must to a certain extent. It, but. it actually, believe it or not, I'm not going to say it doesn't concern me. I'm, I'm anxious for them to open. I think that, um, and people come into my store all the time and ask if I have Gelato and I don't. I send them to the Gelato shop. Yep. Why not? People come in and ask me for smoothies. I don't have smoothies. I have a great location so I, yeah. can, I can be helpful and people like that. Mm -hmm. um, so and even, even working with um, local restaurants, there's a lot of times where restaurants say, you know, they, they'll send people to my store when people say, where can I go to get a really good ice cream? And they'll send them to my place even though they have dessert because in a way too, some of the restaurants want to turn a table. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a really <laughs> nice, uh, I, yeah. I don't know, I think that, um, I think that there, the competition is something that can work to your advantage. It can make you step up your game. And um, I have no problem sending somebody somewhere else. If, if I don't have, if somebody comes in looking for chocolate, they're staying in my store. <laughs> but, right. but honestly, it, or if actually that's not even true because there's times when I send people to somebody on State Street because I may not have what they're looking for. Right. And why not? Why not make a person happy? But you can offer offer great personalization, like if you know ahead yes, of time. And, absolutely, yeah. call ahead. We'll work on that for can't you. Find. Sure, yep. that's terrific. Because we make it in the store. Yeah. We make it right. In fact, a lot of people will walk in too and say, "Oh, is your kitchen back there?" I'm like, "No, my kitchen's right there. You can be on my sidewalk and looking into the kitchen." Yeah. So that's yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, wonderful. So you've been on our board for quite a while now. I won't say yeah, I don't a even couple know years how long. at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us about that. What, uh, what does the board do? I don't think a lot of people realize that. And, and why do you uh, participate in? Um, well, I, I joined the chamber. I want to say it was within like a week of opening my store. Mm -hmm. And um, I already knew the value of being a member. And um, I knew that uh, it, it has the same value in a way of, of just being a good part of your community for, mm -hmm. for um, your 
customers, I also knew that this was something that I wanted to do. So when I was um, asked to be a part of the board, I actually jumped. I, I wanted to do it in a big way. So I, um, I joined the board. I was a little nervous at first. I've never been on a board of anything. I've been part of um, you know, different nonprofits and things like mm -hmm. that, but never really sat on a board in, in any official way. Mm -hmm. And I was a little concerned about the formality of it. I thought, oh, you know, sometimes I, I talk like I'm talking now a little off the cuff and maybe I might say the wrong thing. I hear but, you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but um, everyone was really welcoming and funny. And yeah. I have fun at the board meetings. It's a little early in the morning, but, um, yeah. but I'm okay with that. And I realized that there was, um, there's a lot of um, uh, the, the knowledge that you get at a meeting and from the other board members is very valuable. And just being a part of the pulse of what's going on in your city and in, on the seacoast on a whole, was it, it's valuable for my business as well. So personally, I found it very rewarding. And um, as a business person, I, I think it's um, I think if you have the thought of possibly becoming involved, you should. That's it. You just should, even if it's just as a member to begin with. Mm. Um, if you're asked to be part of the board, absolutely do it. Sure. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing that. And I, I think that's a good time to wrap it up yeah. uh, for today. So I want to thank Jeanette for being here. Go visit her downtown, Market Square, <laughs> Kilwin. She's always there. Or Smell your or, way. <laughs> yeah, just sniff out the chocolate and find your way to Kilwin's and get some ice cream and enjoy. It's a good summertime activity to go down there. So thanks for, for that. Uh, look forward to our next episode in about two weeks. Uh, we've got some great guests lined up, and we're really excited to uh, hear what they have to say and share some more stories about Portsmouth. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. for having me.